I'm Dominic Davis and I'm the founder of Pink Therapy and its Chief Executive Officer. It's been said that I'm the grandfather of gender and sexual diversity therapy in the UK. I've been working with gender and sexual diversity clients for over 30 years and I have co-edited three textbooks with my colleague Charles Neal and contributed to many other publications and journal articles around this emerging subject. We're the lead body and have now been recognised by all the major sci and therapy organisations and have often collaborated with them in conferences and in uh, policy documents. The field has expanded a great deal since the year 2000 and we have embraced it by pioneering work going beyond LGBT. We now em are embracing other marginalised and discriminated identities, asexuals, people involved in BDSM and kink as a consensual sexual practice and lifestyle and other groups which would not feel comfortable accessing mainstream counselling services or indeed accessing the LGBT counselling provision that exists in Britain or indeed some other places around the world. In 2007 the British Association for Counselling and Psychotherapy gave me their highest award which is a fellowship of the association for what they call my outstanding contribution to the field. Last year I was in the Rainbow List, which is the Independent on Sunday newspaper's list of over 101 key LGBT people who are helping to change Britain for a better place. I'm really proud and excited by my contribution to the field of psychotherapy through the development of gender and sexual diversity in Britain. The course that we're launching today has been brought together through a collaboration between myself, my colleague and former student Olivier Cormier Otagno, and Dr Meg John Barker, who works with the Open University. It's a very exciting proposal and we're really pleased to be able to offer it. So Dominic, we've got exciting news at Bing Therapy. We've got some very exciting news, yeah. But before we come to that, uh, maybe we need to talk about what is Pink Therapy and what we do? It's probably a good idea to explain that Pink Therapy is the UK's lead body on working with gender and sexual diversity clients. We've been around for over 15 years. We are the organisation that therapists come to in order to train to work with gender and sexual diversities. And that's a term that we've coined to be much more inclusive uh, than and go beyond LGBT. I, Q, Q, A, because I, LGBTIQQA is A, too much of a mouthful, but it's too narrow because it also excludes things like BDSM, um, asexualities, and other disenfranchised and marginalised groups, object and sexuals, for example, never get covered in LGBTIQQA. So we've kind of extended way beyond. We take a non-pathologising uh, perspective. We're very sex positive. And we don't assume that relationships are best delivered or lived in a, in a, within a, a, a framework of a couple. So we're, we're exploring and teaching therapists around polyamory and non-monogamies and swingers and other forms of relationship style. We also have a strong presence in the debate around conversion therapy. Yes, we've been active in working with all the lead bodies, constructing a document called a Memorandum of Understanding, which puts at its centre the fact that therapists in the UK need to be able to work with requests for change of their same-sex orientation or attractions because they may be presenting uh, gay and unhappy about that and wanting to be cured. Um, and this is something that we've been very actively consulting and working on. So there's a huge body of knowledge and of training to, to, to acquire, to work with this population. We've got a lot of expertise and that's now being recognised, not just in the UK, but for the last six years we've been running an international summer school where we've had therapists flying in from every part of the world. We've had someone from every continent uh, coming to study with us uh, in a small group. We have about 12 people attending these summer schools every year, so it's quite an intimate experience. Um, and have been exploring how is it for gender and sexual diversities in their country. So we've been learning a lot from them, as well as helping them think through and uh, the issues as we see it 
in how best to deliver therapy to, uh, to these communities. And we also have two different diplomas that we've been running for a number of years. Exactly, we have two diplomas. We have the gender, Diploma in Gender and Sexual Diversity Therapy, which is what we're announcing today as an online course. It's becoming an online course. And we've recently started a diploma in relationship therapy that doesn't assume that it's a couple who have a relationship and that that couple are in a, a monogamous relationship. So it's, it, it's looking at relationship therapy for polyamorous and non-monogamies, for people involved in BDSM and kink, for people who want to open up their relationship. And um, that's very pioneering work. And, and as far as I'm aware, no one in the world is running that kind of a course. And now we're taking this first diploma as an online training, and it's going to be two years. Do you want to talk about it? Yes, we've, we're having to run this course over two years because previously it was just a day or, uh, or two days at a weekend, and that's not feasible for people who are studying online, to be sitting in front of a computer for eight hours at a time. So we're spreading the course over two years, and we've got a very interesting and I think quite, quite exciting format for it. There's a theory strand where there are 16 modules that are being taught through self-study. So people will be given guided reading to uh, read and understand. There will be video lectures online that the, the clinical associates and tutorial team will be delivering. And people can watch that in their own time frame. Then they'll submit a written piece of work to demonstrate that they've understood some of this and to reflect on it critically. The reading reflect on the reading critically and, and apply that to practice. And then uh, they will attend a live webinar with one of our tutors who is a subject specialist and be able to interrogate the subject at a much deeper level that will reflect their own learning needs. So that's, one of the, that's the first strand of that course. The second strand of that course is the case discussion groups so the students will be broken into small groups of three and every two weeks one of those three students will present a case that they're working on and if they haven't got a case that they're working on we will provide some, some composite case studies. And they would say how they're, how they're working and illustrate with their peers, get some supervision and some feedback on the work. And they'll all write that up and so every two weeks a different student will present their, their case and then at the end of that cycle they'll meet with one of our five case discussion group tutors and uh, discuss the work in more detail. And so we've got a very interesting team of case discussion group tutors, of which you're one and I'm another. We also have Shelley Bridgman, who's a Gestalt psychotherapist, Amanda Middleton, who's a systemic uh, psychologist uh, from Australia and New Zealand, and who teaches the Psychosex course, and Charles Neal, who co-edited the Three Pink Therapy books with me and has a lot of experience of working with uh, married, men who marry women, with parent, around parenting and around older people and so I'm really delighted to be able to use Charles's expertise on this course too. I always believe that um, clinical supervision of live work is so much more beneficial than just looking at theory. So what I'm looking forward to is the experience of the contributors with their understanding of uh, gender and sexual diversity because I think there are a lot of myths around it and a lot of misconceptions and people are often quite nervous about the area so I'm hoping they dive in headlong so that we can really unpick it and look at their understanding um, and in a non-judgmental non way I'd like to contribute to towards their learning. So I'm hoping that the work for them will throw up any uh, relevant issues that they need to be working with and it, and uh, give them a greater understanding. And for me, I think what's very useful is to look at it in an experiential way so people are not just looking at theory. So those are two core threads that run throughout the two years. And then we're going to have a five-day residential in the middle of the course, over the summer, which will be an opportunity for people to look in more detail at themselves, at their own experiential, the development of themselves, the, their own sexuality and gender. We'll be doing a two-day intensive on psychosexual therapy and we'll be having a day on the development of the self and looking at attachment theory in its relationship to working with gender and sexual diversities. 
And so that's, a very, that's going to be a very exciting time where people can come together and meet each other as well as work in, in some intensity. What are the requirements to be part of this course? The course is open to qualified counsellors and psychotherapists and psychologists. So people need to have completed their clinical training as, and, and be ready for a postgraduate training that's going to require them to be able to commit to two years of study. They need to be fluent in English. They do need to be fluent in English and be able to read English uh, well because all of the course materials are going to be in English. So it, if you're not fluent, you need to be proficient in being able to read English and to be able to converse in English with peers. And in terms of technology, what is required? People will be able to do this on their home computers. So long as they've got a reasonably fast internet connection, then they should be able to participate in this course very well. So anywhere around the world, one can take part in this course? Indeed, anywhere around the world. The training will be, the self-study will be at their, own, at their own program. They just need to be ready to be attending a live webinar at our time on a Friday evening, early on a Friday evening. And we've picked that time in the hope that most people will be able to attend that. The supervision groups, the case discussion groups, because they're in a group of three, they can negotiate that with their peers in that group at a time frame that kind of works for them. Do we want to talk about the team of facilitators and trainers? We've got a pretty interesting team of facilitators and trainers. Uh, we have a large group of clinical associates at Pink Therapy that come from a range of different theoretical models and all identify positively as LGB or T. Um, we have kink identified therapists. We, and we've involved outside of the team some other people who have particular expertise in some subject. So we have an interfaith minister and we have uh, somebody whose expertise is around intersectionality. And we have two psychiatrists, someone from Poland and someone from Turkey, who are also going to be looking at psychopathology as one of the modules in the course. The course comprises of 16 theory modules. The first module is gender and sexual diversity therapy. What it is and what does it mean and what are the core tenets of the approach. The second module is on shame because shame is a core issue affecting most, if not all, gender and sexual diversities. So the module that I teach on the essentials is about shame and internalised depression. Um, obviously a very core issue for a lot of GSD clients. Um, most of us grew up in very uh, oppressive environments and will absorb, have absorbed that in some way. So this module looks at different ways of working with what we've absorbed. The third module is on intersectionality, which is a very current topic and looks at different intersections of identities, age, race, class, um, gender, all of, the, all of these, rurality, and so intersectionality will be studied. The fourth module is on coming out, which is often a core issue for many gender and sexual diversities. On the fifth module, I'm presenting a module on living and working within your own communities. Therapist disclosure of sexual orientation, which is often a core theme for many therapists working with clients, and how we maintain professional boundaries. The sixth module is on ageing and intergenerational work. So I'm one of the writers of the intergenerational and ageing uh, course for Pink Therapy. And the reason I think it's important is that not only do probably all of us have a fear of getting older and dying, but that in the gay world, gay and lesbian world, there's also the issue around loss of looks, fear about being past it and whether we'll be even seen in our world with any kind of interest or respect.
The seventh module is on gender identities. When I'm the presenter on the on webinar for gender identities, I think what we want to do is take a, a root and branch look at it really, give people comfort with terminology, what the various experiences mean. And I see my job as a facilitator of a process that makes people comfortable about challenging their own norms and their own expectations so that it's a, an experience that will be beneficial because people are not inhibited about saying the wrong thing. For me I think that's really really important. And the eighth module, completing the first year, will be on different sexual practices. Hi, I'm Meg John Barker and I'm going to be presenting the sessions on gender identities and sexual practices on the Pink Therapy online course. Um, I think these uh, topics are both really important and somewhat neglected often when the focus is on sexual identities such as LGB. Um, so the gender identities one will be covering the full range of gender identities that people can have um, from both a cisgender or a trans perspective. Um, so covering masculinities and femininities but also um, all of the non-binary genders um, that are proliferating at the moment and people are beginning to experience and identify with. Um, for sexual practices, again, the focus is often identity rather than practice. So we'll be looking at uh, practices such as kink sexualities and often, the, and also just a different range of sexual practices that, that people engage with more widely. Um, and again, I think this begins to fill in the gaps that are left by a lot of the training in these areas that focuses on sexual identities. And then the course will have a five-day residential intensive. The five-day residential will commence with Amanda Middleton and I taking a two-day workshop of an introduction to psychosexual therapy. Therapists generally do cover very little about human sexuality and are often too afraid to even discuss sexual issues with their clients. And so we have developed a two-day course which we've been running for about a decade now. We will also have a day on attachment theory and attachment therapy with Judy Yellen. And this is a psychoanalytic model which looks at the development of the self and is core to working with gender and sexual diversity clients. And ha we have a particular slant on that, which I think you'll find very interesting. The uh, fourth day of the course will be uh, an experiential day that Olivier and uh, Mich Michelle Bridgman, or Shelley Bridgman as we call her, will be facilitating an exploration of your own sexual histories and gender identities and how you've come to make sense of yourself. And on the last day of the residential, uh, Olivier and I will be looking at support, supervision, ethics and boundary issues, um, particularly focusing on how you're supporting yourself when you go back away from the residential, because many of the therapists that we have been training are working in isolation and it's really important that we think about that. We think the residential is going to be a very exciting part of the course. And in the evenings, we're going to be showing uh, LGBT movies and having some discussions around some of that, as well as having the opportunity to meet with most of the case discussion group tutors will be holding a tutorial during that, during that residential. Beginning the second year, Module 9 will be on relationships, looking at different models of relationships and, the di and relationship dynamics. Module 10 will be on sexual practices at a deeper level, including BDSM. Module 11 will be on LGBT parenting issues. Module 12 is on abuse, both child sexual abuse and domestic violence and int intimate partner abuse. Module 13 will be on mental health issues and working with more severe and underlying and enduring psychopathologies and mental health problems. And we have that being presented by two psychiatrists. Module 14 will be on substance misuse and both alcohol and drugs are implicated in higher incidences amongst gender and sexual diversities. So the module is substance misuse. Um, the relevance, I guess, is, is, is about the overlap between psychological problems and substance misuse across the range. Um, there are various groups that we might think about importantly. Recent, recent reports, certainly in the UK, have indicated the 
concentration sometimes for um, alcohol use and alcohol use problems amongst lesbian and bi women, um, a, a, a group that perhaps otherwise may not seek help and treatment in statutory services may be experiencing a lot of difficulties that may otherwise go unrecognised. Um, uh, for, for myself, well, a, a fair bit of my recent experience, I suppose, has been involved in both the treatment and also thinking about national policy uh, around what we're certainly in the UK in uh, major cities calling chemsex difficulties, where uh, gay and bi men's sexual behaviour and their club drug behaviour become so overlinked and associated that, that we, you know, finding reports of people who are not having sex outside of drug use for, for uh, any times at all. Um, and uh, for me this is of key significance because I suspect that, that guys who are involved in this kind of difficulty, having these kind of difficulties are, are again not going to show up in mainstream uh, substance misuse services. Uh, but may indeed find their way to um, GSD therapists and other particular you know, focused uh, treatment services, uh, both perhaps statutory and also kind of non-statutory services. Uh, and certainly in the last couple of years uh, in the UK, um, one of the key focuses for, for looking at chemsex in gay and bi men um, has been the concern how this may be implicated in um, a, a higher rates of HIV zero conversion, that, that, that during intoxication, during these kind of sexual encounters, um, gay and bi men may not be kind of having the, the same level of protected sex that they may otherwise want to have, um, and therefore leading to quite a lot of concern really about, about this area of health. Module 15 is on faith, religion and spirituality. One of the difficulties about being gay uh, for a lot of people is that because uh, m most religions have been traditionally very homophobic, that a lot of uh, LGBT people have thrown out the baby with the bathwater and decided they were going to have nothing to do with faith because it was um, discriminatory and persecutory. Uh, and that's a great shame because we all have spirituality, we all have um, a level of understanding and appreciation of the world which we could broadly call spiritual, even if you don't have a, a dedicated faith. And um, it's not an easy subject to talk about in the LGBT world because it's so bound up with some of the, the horrible experiences people have had with religion. So we're trying to redeem the idea that uh, you can be spiritual, you can have a faith, and you can participate in the world like everybody else. And uh, spirituality, in its broadest sense, gives, gives meaning to life and gives mean, meaning and purpose to why we are alive and how we fulfil ourselves and have better relationships. So we wanted to explore um, the nature of spirituality from a, a non-sectarian viewpoint. Um, what does it offer? LGBT people and how do LGBT people, people engage with spiritual questions. And module 16 is on conversion therapy, sometimes known as reparative therapy, where people are in, engaging in attempts to change sexual or gender identities. PDF started in 1975 as a network of practitioners in health, education, social services, etc., who came together to share skills. So essentially that's where it started, as a skill exchange. No money changed hands. Gradually we began to recognise that people doing work needed some way of accrediting that. So we started developing work-based ways of accrediting people's learning. And that's in essence how it started, and in essentially what it continues to do. So what we do is through our relationships with both professional bodies, and universities, we work with partners and those partners have to be people who are leading edge in their area. Why we're interested in pink therapy is because it fits our criteria. Pink therapy is the leading provider of work in this field. Therefore, we can look to pink therapy and say, okay, this is great work. We're happy to be associated with it. It's also an area of interest for us because it's been difficult for people in a number of fields to actually get training in anything to do with gay, lesbian, gender, etc. Um, areas of practice. It's not been something that the, the, traditionally the therapy groups have covered well and therefore 
enabling people to develop their understanding in this field is something which we feel is very important. Sakai is an open source system. So it's been developed through the open source community to provide online learning solutions. It's used by 600 plus universities worldwide, plus lots of other people. And that whole open source community adds material in to make it work well. And essentially what it does, it enables teaching online, it enables groups of students or candidates as PDF calls them, to work together online, it enables resources to be available online, it enables people to call meetings and talk to each other online so that a genuine community of learners can be generated. How does one apply to this diploma? The application procedure is through a form that students will be asked to fill in to explain more about their background and training and what they've already got, uh, where they've studied. And then there will be an online interview with one of the course tutors, after which we'll be we will be able to make a decision as to whether we can offer them a place or not. And how many students do we intend to, to take per cohort? We're recruiting 15 students per cohort because we think that that's going to be a good number for the case discussion group rotations, as well as allow us to give some fairly good attention to each student that, are, that is in the course. We will be talking about the fees of this course. We've thought about the fee structure and we're going to be offering a discount to people who can pay their fees up front and so they can pay a year at a time up front. But we're also going to be offering a payment plan so people can pay in instalments to spread the cost of the course throughout the, over each year. Thanks for watching this short presentation. We really hope that you're going to join us on the journey into becoming a more comfortable and competent therapist working with gender and sexual diversities. It's going to be a lot of fun.